Hello, welcome to our online course on data analysis for biologist. This is the first lecture. In this lecture, we will discuss about some basic rules of probability. Now, any discussion on probability cannot uh, be started without discussing dice throw and you know a coin toss. So, I have a die in hand. Now, if I throw this, it, I can have six outcomes, right? I can have uh, six outcomes which are 1, 2, 3 or 4 and 5 or 6. Now, these are all outcomes of a die throw. Now, if I throw it and I get suppose uh, 6, right? So, that is one event. So, now I can ask what is the probability that if I throw this die, I will get a particular face or a particular value 6, 1, 2 or something like that. Now, the probability by probability what we mean is that you need a I want a numerical description of likelihood that a specific phase of this die will appear when I throw it. Now, the uh, idea of uh, you know outcomes and events uh, are sometimes a bit difficult to understand. So, let us take an another example. Suppose I have a coin or rather I have suppose I have uh, two coins here right and I throw them, I toss them. So, each of them if I toss I will get a head or a tail. Now, if I toss both of them one after another, then I can have multiple results, right? multiple outcomes. For example, one outcome could be that you get uh, HH or one outcome could be TH, tail and head. The other outcome could be H and tail. So, I have four possible outcomes. Now, suppose if I define that okay, I will toss these two coin to uh, one after another and then I want to know that okay, uh, whether I have got two, uh, one H out of this, one head out of this coin toss or uh, two coin tosses or not. So, that is one event, right. So, I can get this one head out of two coin tosses by two way. One is H and T, the other one is T and H. Or suppose I have tossed it twice and I, uh, I want that okay, no H has appeared, then that can happen only in one way that is TT. In both cases, I have got tail and tail. So, in, in this case, what I can ask, tell me what is the probability that if I toss the coin twice, I will get no head, right. So, I want to know the probability of this second event that no H will appear. So, again what I am asking is that I am asking you to give me some numerical description of how likely that no H, no head will appear if I toss the coin twice. So, then I can generalize it further. I can say probability is a numerical description of how likely an event is to occur. Now, what do I mean by this uh, numerical description, right? That is one important question. I have to understand what do I mean by numerical description. By numerical description, what we essentially means that we want some sort of relative frequency. What do I mean by relative frequency? Suppose I repeat the trial, I repeat the coin toss, I repeat the throw of dice multiple times, large number of times, hundreds of times, and then I ask, I calculate the proportion of times that when that particular event like I have tossed twice 100 times and I have not got any head in each of those two coin tosses. So, those are the events and I am asking you what is the proportion of times that that event has happened when I have random done random trials for a large number of times. So, now so I take the example of a die throw. In die throw, I have uh, six possible event I can have, right. I can get one if I throw it. I can get 3, 2, 5 and 6. Now, suppose each of these has some associated probability, right. Each of them has some associated probability. I may have uh, calculated them by large number of throw of die or some other way I know this probability and I represent those probability as P of 1, P of 2, P of 3, P of 4 and P of 5 and 6. So, as these are relative uh, frequencies, as these probabilities are essentially proportion, then what I can say that each of this p, this each of this probability should be less equal to 1 and they will be positive. So, they should be greater equal to 0. Now, these are all relative frequencies. 
probabilities are proportions, relative frequency. So, if I sum them all this probability, if I sum all this probability, then what do I get? I should get the summation of all this probability and that should be equal to 1. Now, when we discuss about probability and statistics, we have to remember two very important terms. One is called mutually exclusive event and independent events. So, what is mutually exclusive event? If I have two events, like for example, I am throwing the die and I get 1 or 2 or 3 or 5 or 6, something like that, right? Each of them is an event. So, now two events are mutually exclusive when two of those cannot happen simultaneously at the same time. If I toss a coin, I will either get head or tail. Both head and tail cannot happen together. So, these are called mutually exclusive event. Either a DNA base is mutated or it is not mutated. Either a bacteria has got killed or it has not got killed. So, these are all mutually exclusive. Now, if I have two random variable or events which are x and y and they are mutually exclusive event, then what I can say that as they are mutually exclusive, the probability that both of them will happen simultaneously is equal to 0. So, how do I represent that? I represent that as P of x and y. Notice this and. That means, both of them are happening together and that should be equal to 0. Now, if x and y are mutually exclusive event, then what if I ask what is the probability that either of x or y would happen? So, that would be P of x or y. Notice here and is replaced by or, right? So, either x or y will happen and I, I want to know the probability of that. So, probability of x or y would be equal to P x probability of x plus probability of y. Now, what if x and y are not mutually exclusive? So, in that case, what will be the probability that either x or y will happen? So, again I want to calculate the probability that x or y, but x and y are not mutually exclusive. So, what will be that probability? To understand that, let us use some graphical method. So, suppose I, I consider x and y are mutually exclusive, x and y are mutually exclusive and this circle that I have drawn here roughly represent their whole probability space. Then, as they are mutually exclusive, they should be completely separated, right? They should be completely separated. Now, suppose they are not mutually exclusive. That means, there should be some overlap between these two circles. Let me erase those and draw again. So, if they are not mutually exclusive, then x and y circles that I have drawn earlier will have some overlap, right? And what is this overlap region? This overlap region is this red colored thing that I am drawing. And what is that? That is x and y. Both an x and y has happened simultaneously. So, to get the probability that x or y will happen, what I have to do? I have to take probability of x plus probability of y and then I have to subtract that shared area, otherwise I am counting the same thing twice. So, probability of x or y when x and y are not mutually exclusive is probability of x plus probability of y minus probability of x and y. Now, this rule, this rule is known as the addition rule. So, we call it addition rule. Now, there is the another important point apart from mutually exclusive event, events can be mutually independent. Let us see what is that. Two events are mutually independent if occurrence of one event does not affect the probability of the other event. For example, you are suppose you are studying the uh, you know mistakes in DNA sequencing. So, one error at one particular base of the DNA sequence does not affect the probability of another error somewhere else. So, we can consider these two errors in your DNA sequencing result are mutually independent. 
So, now if two events are independent, then I can ask okay, x and y are mutually independent, then I can ask what is the probability that both will happen at the same time. right? So, then I am asking you to calculate the probability of x and y because both will happen and that would be equal to probability of x and probability of y because they are independent. Now, suppose I have another third event x, y and z. So, in that case probability that x and y and z all will happen is equal to as they are independent probability of x multiplied by probability of y and multiplied by probability of z. Now, let us jot down what we have learned in this particular lecture. I have discussed what is probability. Right? Probability is a numerical measure of likely uh, how likely a particular event can happen and that numerical measure is nothing but some sort of proportion relative frequency of how often that event can happen if we do large number of trial or experiments. Now, events can be mutually exclusive or independent. Now, based on this mutually exclusiveness, you know if I have two mutually exclusive event x and y, then probability that either of them will happen p x or y is equal to probability of x plus probability of y. And this is called the addition rule. We can generalize this addition rule if considering that okay, x and y are not mutually exclusive. In that case, probability that x or y is equal to probability of x plus probability of y minus probability of x and y. Now, if x and y are independent event, then we get the product rule. What is it? In that case, probability that x and y and z three independent event will happen is equal to probability of x into probability of y into probability of z and this is what we call product rule. With this, I will end the, this lecture. Before we end, let me give you a problem to solve. Suppose we have collected data from population and we have tried to identify the population distribution of four blood group O, A, B and AB and that data is given here. Now, the question is if I pick someone randomly from the population right? without any bias, you are randomly picking someone from the population and then if I ask can that random person donate blood to a person whose blood group is B. So, what I am asking you to calculate using the data given here, what is the probability that a randomly chosen person can donate blood to a person with blood group B. To answer this question, you have to use either the rule of addition, product rule or the idea of mutually exclusive and idea of mutually independent that we have discussed in this lecture. So, try to solve this one. Till then, happy learning. Thank you.